you know, and, yeah. and why are we doing this? Well, Gordon, we've always done it this way. You know, status quo. One of the, the rules I keep on preaching is we've got to look for new and better ways. Our public deserves better than minimum standards. Our people deserve better than minimum standards. Our profession deserves better than minimum standards. We've got to be looking for the next best way. San Diego 9 emergency. Oh, you need to come right away. There's a man with a gun and it's what loaded. What is it? Receiving emergency signal from people with George 1141. We've got a waking up now. We need paramedics uh, close for you. All available units will code that way. Welcome to Season 1, Episode 3. And the theme for Season 1 is Tactical TLC Training, Leadership, and Communication. If you haven't listened to Episode 2, where Gordon Graham talks about training, please be sure to do that. And at the beginning of that episode, I give a lot more information on Gordon Graham, his training programs, and the really amazing awards that he's received. And anticipating that you will listen to that, here's just a couple of things about Gordon that you should know that I didn't mention before. Risk management, it's not just a class that Gordon teaches. It is a way of life for him and has been for decades. He has a huge commitment to safety for first responders. So check out firefightercloscalls.com and also check out lexipol, L-E-X-I-P-O-L.com. Don't worry if you're driving or, or if you don't have a, something to jot things down with. These links will be in the show notes. So you can take a look at those and get that information later. Now, both of these websites really highlight the talents and dedication that Gordon Graham lives each and every day. And I'm proud to call Gordon my hero, my mentor, and my friend. So, here he is and his views on leadership. You know, and, yeah. and why are we doing this? Well, Gordon, we've always done it this way. You know, status quo. One of the, the rules I keep on preaching is we've got to look for new and better ways. Our public deserves better than minimum standards. Our people deserve better than minimum standards. Our profession deserves better than minimum standards. We've got to be looking for the next best way. Well, Gordon, we've always done it this way. You know, it just... It's, it's, it's nightmarish to me that we're locked into um, you know, this insane thing that we don't train during the hours we work. Excellent, excellent point. And, and, and a great way to, to finish up the block for the tactical TLC on training. And uh, what I'd like to do next is I'm going to have you shift gears just a little bit and we're going to shift into leadership. So nice welcome segue. to the- and don't interrupt me, because I'm going to tell you that. <laughs> nice segue. The, the, we, we chatted about this in the preparation for this, but the difference between management and leadership, and let's use the segue that we just had. The manager will say, you know what? We're going to schedule the training for 8 to 5, even though we know that people have worked all night long, but we train from 8 to 5. The leader will say, no, no, this is the way we're going to do it. The manager will follow the existing policy. They will, you know, do what they're told to do. The leader will say, is there a better way to do this? Is there a better way to do this? More strategic thinking than operational thinking. Yeah, and I, I think that's an excellent point that you draw just as a as a easy to figure out. And, and, and you're giving us a takeaway right from the very beginning. And, you know, I look for a takeaway in every block. But the ability to figure out internally doing that self-check am i coming from a management point of view or am i coming from a leader point of view am i managing or am i leading and and you just gave it are you are you managing just because it we've you're using the well we've always done it this way and you can't think outside of that limitation that outside of that box or are you figuring out what is going to be most effective what's going to be the best use of of your of, of the learning opportunity for your people and what's going to serve the public and your staff best. Well, I'm not a leader because I'm only a line employee. I'm only a dispatcher. So I'm not a leader. I'm only a street cop. So I'm not a leader. I'm what do you say? What do you say to them about that? You know, I, I, I said, you know, and that's, that's the feeling, you know, one of my pet peeves is some of the brightest people in every given law enforcement agency are at the line level. They have chosen not to promote because they love what they do. 
And there is this perception among many people inside and outside of our profession that if you don't carry rank, obviously you're not a bright person. Nothing could be further from the truth. Some of the smartest people I have met in law enforcement, some of the great thinkers are at the lowest levels of the organization. Now, they might not consider themselves a leader, but other people recognize them as the leader. You know, they're the leader and they understand what's going on. I think I talked to you about this the other day, that too many people think that they're, they're synonyms. If I look up management, I'm going to get a synonym for leadership. No, you won't. No, you won't. They're, it's apples and oranges. Management is operational. Leadership is strategic. Got to be thinking. Yeah. Those are black swans and gray rhinos. <laughs> yeah. To use your analogy yeah. from earlier. So the informal leader, I, I, I think that, in, and you and I, you know, we, sat there in your living room the other day and we were talking and, and uh, we talked about when a new supervisor comes on, you know, you got it. You have a fire captain that now has a new crew. They're going to have an informal leader that's there who can provide super valuable information and influence the way things go from then on out. And if they don't recognize it, that, you know, you come in as a person of rank, I don't care whether you're a, a, a sergeant or a fire captain or, uh, any any rank, if you don't recognize that you have the informal leaders there already, you're walking in blind. Would you yep. agree with that? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and, and you've got to identify those people up front. And I don't want to use the word co-opt, but you've got to get their line of thinking what they think so that you can, you know, make your message compatible, consistent, complimentary to what their feelings are about these issues. And just one little inappropriate word, one little inappropriate comment can lose that leadership support. You know, I'll, I'll tell you something very funny that happened early on in my career. And I'll say the guy's name, he's deceased now. He was a sergeant on the CHP, a guy named Russ Partridge. And a nice enough guy, uh, he was a professional volleyball player before he came on the highway patrol. And he was a sergeant. And I'm nobody. I'm a motorcycle cop, and I'm just trying to do my job, 70s. And he comes up to me, and he says, Gordon, I, uh, I need to talk to you. I said, about what, Sarge? And he says, do you recognize what an informal leader you are on the California Highway Patrol? And, you know, I'm thinking, I'm nobody. I'm nobody. And I said, pardon? He says, I've been talking to other cops. And I'm telling you, Gordon, they really look up to you as an informal leader on the CHP. And I'm there thinking, man, I didn't know that. I had no clue. And I said, well, thanks, Sarge. He says, it's not one, it's not two, but several cops look at you as an informal leader. I said, well, thanks, Sarge. Well, Gordon, with that in mind, I've got an opening on the Occupational Safety Committee, and I am hopeful that you'll take this position on the Area Occupational Safety Committee. Holy moly, I'm an informal leader? And they want me on the Occupational Safety Committee. I'm the happiest guy in the world. My God, I just thought I was a regular old motorcycle cop. I am somebody. So I get home that night. This is long before I'm married. Get home my roommate, another CHP officer. I said, hey, Mike, hey, Mike, guess what? Sergeant Parcher's called me in. And guess what? I'm going to be on the Occupational Safety Committee. And he says, oh, Gordon, don't tell me you fell for that crap about you being an informal leader. <laughs> and, and I, what? <laughs> he goes, he says that all the time because nobody wants to be on occupational safety. <laughs> you know, I remember that to this day. And, that, and it, sadly, I've used that line with people also. <laughs> oh, too funny. Yeah. Too funny. Well, so if, if you are that leader on – you know, your ambulance crew, your, your EMS unit, your fire unit, your, your police unit, whatever agency you're working for, what would you, what words of wisdom would you have for them to be able to win? Because they're a leader. And what would you say when they're being supervised by a manager? Putting you on the spot here. Well, the, 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 the key is, if I, I think the true leadership is practice what you preach. You want to lose your crew? You want to lose your audience immediately? Say one thing and behave a different way. You know, mm. I can recall people talking ethics, giving us an ethics class, and they were the most unethical people I've ever met. You know, we don't take free meals. We don't do this. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Or we treat people with dignity and respect. You don't. You know, you have zero credibility. 
So if you're that company officer on the fire service or the, uh, the sergeant in law enforcement agency or the supervising dispatcher, and you want people to follow your lead, set the proper example, practice what you preach, be real. I think the word here is authenticity, authenticity. And I think I mentioned to you a great book about George Washington and you know what you can lead through fear that doesn't work while he's sociable therefore he's a leader that doesn't work he's likable that doesn't work yeah. you know that that person who is relentless who is authentic who is genuine who loves what they do and they exude that those are the people that get followed yeah yeah and i think I another word in there is be humble i remember schwarzkopf at the end of the gulf war and I think the university will say he did a phenomenal job. And they said, what a phenomenal job you did. And you know what his response was? I was just the next general up. Any general in the United States Army could have done it the same way. You know, uh, I, I listened to, to a Sullenberger give a talk once. So what a fantastic job. Any pilot could have done it the exact same way. You know, and praising the crew, you know, for, for all their support. And I'm not being rude here. But what did the crew do? This is the guy that landed that thing in the Hudson, you know, and he's giving credit to the crew. They will follow that person forever, forever. I, I look at some of these bosses who never go to the range. They never go to the range because now I'm the chief of police. I'm the sheriff now. I don't have to go to the range anymore. What happens when the superintendent of your organization, the colonel, the chief, shows up at the range and out shoots everybody, you know? And takes the gun cleaning seriously, doesn't have somebody else clean the gun, walks around and says hi to people, gives them little points of improvement on how to do a little bit better. You know, that's, that's the leader, you know, not the person who's operational, just doing what they're told to do, but really improving the quality of the individual and the quality of the organization. And if we had more people like that, which brings me into another one of our pet peeves, my pet peeves, who are our FTOs? Who are the FTOs? You know, I, I talk to doctors about nursing babies. Is it better to be breastfed or is it better to be on the bottle? You know, and there's all sorts of nature versus nurture issues going on here. But I've known women who could only breastfeed for a very short period of time rather than the full term. And they had to go to the bottle for a number of medical issues. Mm -hmm. And when I asked doctors that question, they said, it's the first day is really what's most important. That transfer the first day is important. Everything after that's nice, but those initial transfers of the nutrients are the critical. The FTO process. Who do we select to be our FTOs? Who selects the field training officers? Mm, yeah. Well, you know, he's a hard charging guy. He goes out there, writes a lot of tickets, takes a lot of people to jail. No nonsense guy. Is that really the ideal person we want being the FTO? Here's this person, brand new, fresh out of the academy, who really wants to do this job fresh out of the you know, fire academy, fresh out of the police academy, who wants to be that screaming professional, and they run into some guy who has race issues or LBTQ, GQ, fix me on this one when you get that. LB yeah, I'll, I'll do that. I'll put it in. I'll put like yeah. a lower third in for you. Yeah. You know, <laughs> uh, issues with sex orientation, yeah. issues with national origin, you know, uh, issues with excessive force, issues with we can take shortcuts on policies and procedures. You know, this guy blew a .20, so don't write down that he only hit the lane line. Write down that he went one foot over the lane, because that's what two O's do. No, 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 no. That's not the truth. And right. the second a trainee hears that, you know, one of two things is gonna happen. The rarity is the trainee's gonna say, I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The, the more likely outcome is, well, that's the way we do business. And then the slippery slope where we start taking shortcuts, and it's just the kiss of death. Yeah, and I would agree with you on that. In fact, um, having taught at our FTO Academy here in San Diego and, and the refresher, the block that I loved more than anything to teach was the teaching and training techniques block. And it was only four hours out of the entire academy. And I th I've always thought that that was odd. Is like, why do we take the most important skill or set of skills an FTO can have and out of 24 hours, it's four. We spend as much time on, on uh, liability as yep. we do training techniques. And <laughs> that's, that's just wrong yep. in, in my book. And, and, and the reason is because the FTO needs to be able to understand, I, I have this wisdom. They're the Robin Hood in the car. And they need to take the, steal the wisdom from themselves and pass it along 
in a, in a way that the trainee is actually wants to learn and the trainee can actually retain that information. And, and the FTOs, I think, I, I think even more than sergeants, I think the FTOs are truly uh, almost as impactful on a law enforcement agency. And, you know, your new firefighters, when they're coming out, that first crew that they're put with absolutely really sets the tone for the rest of their career. Absolutely it does. And it, going back to the breastfeeding example, you know, it's only short in duration, but that can impact the rest of your career, whether it's one day or two days where we can transfer the nutrients, you know, and then have to go to the bottle. That initial transfer is the key. What are they immersed into? And if they come into a, a fire station where inappropriate behavior is allowed, where the captain is not running a tight ship, where people are allowed to bring girlfriends in or drinking on duty, you know, that's just wrongheaded thinking and that'll poison them for the rest of their career. Yeah, and the same for a medic when they're when they're depending who they're put with, uh, as 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 both uh, proctors and also just for new partners. Yep, it's it's really that's super critical decision making. So and not yeah. to be redundant, but here we go again: preservation of life. You right. know that that has got to be the theme from the academy through the initial training process, the ongoing. What's the most important thing we do? Preservation of life. Anything short of that is secondary. We've got to worry about the preservation of life. Our lives, our public's lives, that's the key component here. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you on that. So let's shift out of the leadership portion and let's shift over into the communication portion. Thanks for listening to the Tomorrow's Police Officer podcast. This episode of season one Tactical TLC was all about leadership. Be sure to look for the other two segments of this interview, one that covers training and the other that covers, of course, communication. New episodes come out every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 6 a.m. Pacific. To listen to other episodes, simply go to our website, tomorrowspoliceofficer.com forward slash podcast. There you'll find not only a complete library of all of our episodes, you'll also find show notes, links, our guest biographies, as well as contact information for our guests so you can learn more about them and from them. If you or someone you know is interested in a law enforcement career, be sure to check out the Get Hired Academy, where you'll be able to learn everything you need to become a law enforcement officer. We cover everything from preparing for the written exam, take you through all of the interviews and all of the other testing that you'll do during the background investigation process, and get you fully prepared for the final interview to get you hired. I've coached hundreds of people through the hiring process, and I don't want you to say or do something that will end your career before it even begins. Look, we need great cops, and I can help you get hired. Now, whether at work or at home, if you've ever had someone get mad at you, uh, even when you've had the best of intentions, for some reason they didn't trust you, they didn't believe you, they were upset with you, or maybe you were the one who had the misunderstanding, there's a lot of help available on our website. The reality is first responders have tons of extra stress on their relationships, both at work and at home. And it seems like every time you turn around, there's a new load being put on your shoulders. You can quickly find what you need at the tomorrowspoliceofficer.com website. Communication skills, new and innovative de-escalation training, leadership and relationships. Those are our areas of specialty. So check out tomorrowspoliceofficer.com and you'll find what you're looking for. Until next time. Stay safe.